I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I'm pleased to have you join us. We've got kind of a different show here for the next couple of weeks. I, I, I'm interested to see how this all turns out. But as we've interviewed people over the last five years, believe it or not, we've discovered many different paths to the biblical Jesus, different things that affected people in a different way. And they find they found different things that piqued their interest and their curiosity and they began questioning, researching and finding even more of the contradictory and confusing things about Mormonism and, it, and they all declare now generally and uh, that they know more about Mormonism than they ever did before as, as Mormons. And um, gratefully these same people have come to learn and trust the Bible and the biblical Jesus. So I've invited a good friend and brother, Warren Puckett, Glad to have you here. It's good to be here. Earl. To join me and to cover a, a number of topics in kind of a sequence here. And Warren was a member of the church for 43 years, and I interviewed him and his lovely wife Suzanne back in February of thank you, back in February of 2016. And uh, episodes 182 and 183. If you'd like to hear a little more of his his story, Warren also has a ministry called Breaking Bread that he does every week and post that and you've done some 80s shows yeah, these or around so, 85 83 different mormon like lds uh and christian topics and yes. so on yeah yeah and so uh, but anyway for for the audience just real quickly tell us a little bit about your journey uh, out of mormonism <laughs> well you know like i shared last time uh, earl it was um you know i grew up in the church basically i was four years old my parents joined and um uh, you know, I just, uh, to make a long story short, I was uh, 47, and uh, because of a certain chain of events um, that took place, uh, I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I could go through it, but, you yeah. know, I think I shared a little bit Show on the last before. show. But uh, the, the, big, the big point to make is, you know, I'm in relationship with Jesus now, and it changed my life completely hmm. completely I'm not uh, a member of a religion yeah. I have a relationship an intimate relationship with the Lord uh, Jesus Christ and that's uh, and it, my life hasn't been the same since uh -huh. and uh, I just share that and I try to help other and I'm not saying that um, some LDS have that I, I mean who knows a man's heart they have a heart for you know Jesus. God God knows that yeah. I'm just saying that that Mormonism is not the way. Yeah. Jesus is the way, the truth right. and the life. And that's that's basically a message and that he's enough. Yeah. You know. So well, thanks. That's great. Well, so we've we've gone through and listed a number of topics. I'm sorry, I'm not used to that. List a number of topics that uh that we'll cover and uh, hope hope you find them interesting and and some of the things that affected us as we came out. Uh, of the church and a lot of things that we didn't e ever even know. You know right. right, that's right. So one of the things, that, and by the way, you can go to utlm.org, mrm.org, irr.org, mormonthink, I think, dot com yeah. for other topical indexes so that you can study and research some of these topics that we're covering. And Because we could spend the whole time just on one topic. Absolutely. And, uh, and we've got so many, so we hope, we hope again that this is interesting. But before we begin, Warren, and this is going to kind of take you off the cuff real quick, but Good. how did you deal with feelings and priesthood blessings as you came out of the church? <sighs> feelings and priesthood blessings. Well, feelings... I mean, warm and fuzzy is kind of the, you yeah. know, pray about it and get a warm feeling and you know it's true. Right. Uh, well, you know, it's, that, it's the emotions. If my feelings are lining up, with what the Word of God is telling me, you know, what I read in the Bible. You know, that's to me is the big thing is that, you know, we believe in the Bible as far as it's 
translated correctly. Right. So, you know, that leaves you in constant doubt, you know. As is, to what the Bible says, even yeah. though it was here first. So once that foundation was laid that, hey, I can trust this Bible. I can yeah. trust the Word of God. You know, I, I, if my feelings line up with what the Bible says, good to go. But yeah. I, I trust the Word of God. Oh, good. Trust the Word of God. So that's, that's how I deal with that feelings thing. Okay. Priesthood blessings, did you have some that you felt, you know, tears and I did. warmth? And Absolutely. Yeah, I got, I did and I too. had experiences with that that I felt. Uh, I don't think God is any respecter of people, you know, whether you're Mormon or whatever. Yeah. You know, if you're sincerely seeking Him, even though you're sincerely wrong in your beliefs, you know, or, or misguided right. in some way, if you're sincerely seeking, God blesses you. And he, he loves us, you know, he loves well, us. Well, that's what I, I felt like. It, those blessings that I gave were between me and God. Absolutely, and, uh, absolutely, between and, you and God. God and that person. As you say, they, he loves us. Because he, he knows all the facts. Yeah. You know? One other thing is the, uh, the, using the same words, different meanings. Have you run into that much where Mormons, yes. I mean, we have save, being saved yep. and eternal salvation. life and salvation and all those things. Yes, grace, yeah. <laughs> all of that. And yeah. to, a, to a Christian, being saved means... Well, to a Christian means you're saved. It you're, means Jesus with, did it all, you know. You're with God. You're with God. You're yeah. going to, that blessed assurance, you yes, know. Yes, that's right. So, Well, I, I do two things usually, um, and that is, uh, or two things that I kind of use as standards or something. But I always talk about the bad news and the good news, and we're going to cover a little bit of both today. Okay, and then great. also that it's the gospel of Joseph Smith. And we've talked about yes. this, and you mentioned the foundation of the Bible, and anything added to that really becomes another gospel, right? It really does. Yeah. I, I agree with that. And we're going to start out with an interesting one. God was once a man. Absolutely. <laughs> and let's get started. Go ahead. I want to real quick, though, just share this real quick, real quick. This is a quote that Gordon B. Hinckley made, and I think it's really important. I think it's vital to everything we're talking about. And I just want to just read it. It says, each of us has to face the matter. Either the church is true or it is a fraud. There is no middle ground. It is the church and kingdom of God, or it is nothing. Yeah. So that's Gordon B. Hinckley's words. That's not mine. Pretty specific, isn't now, it? <laughs> you know, there's, I mean, that's kind of a, you know, draw the line in the Somebody sand said thing. said no wiggle room. There. You know, because you hear sometimes, well, but the church does so much good. There's yeah. so much good that comes out of it. Yeah. Gordon B. Hinckley said it's either the truth or it's a fraud. It's yeah. either the kingdom or it's nothing. So I just wanted to share that because that's really important yeah. in anything we discuss. And the Salvation Army does a lot of good, too. But right. Gordon B. Hinckley said a lot of things. You know, and God yeah. was once a man. Uh, you know, when he was interviewed, real quick, uh, you know, he he was asked by uh, Time magazine, you know, uh, he, he, asked, he was asked, there are significant differences in your belief. For instance, don't Mormons believe that God was once a man? Gordon B. Hinckley said, I wouldn't say that. There was a little couplet coined, as a man is, God once was. As God is, man may become. Now, that's more of a couplet than anything else that gets in some pretty deep theology that we don't know very much about. Okay, so <laughs> this is, um, you know, or actually this was a quote, a quote that he gave to the San Francisco Chronicle, but the under, he knew what he was doing. Oh, of course. Because in, in 94, 1994, in the end zone, November, right. this is a quote from uh, Gordon B. Hinckley. This was like, what, three years before. The whole design of the gospel is to lead us onward and upward to greater achievement, even eventually to godhood. This great possibility was enunciated by the prophet Joseph Smith in the King Follett sermon. Uh, see teachings of Prophet Joseph Smith and emphasize with President Lorenzo Snow. It is the, this grand and incomparable concept, as God now is, man may become. And, and of course, he, he also believed that, you know, God once was a man. Yeah, the I mean, whole he, purpose so he of wasn't, the temple uh, and everything else. I think he just didn't want to come publicly out and make that statement. Or it just seems it doesn't sound quite right. Does it doesn't it sound no. quite right, does yeah, it? No. I mean, not when you read, we, not when you're a student of the that Bible. God was once a man, and that we can become like we yeah. can become gods. Yeah, and, but and, that's the whole purpose of the temple and everything else. Absolutely. And yeah. Joseph Smith, you know, even said, you know, you have heard that God has been God for all eternity. I'll refute that. Yeah. He said. Yeah. I mean, that that's what Joseph that's Smith funny. said. So. Anyway, yeah. look look that one up a little bit Absolutely. more. Absolutely, next that. one next one's Joseph Smith's boast, <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to read the boast from History of the Church, hopefully on the screen there. Come on, ye prosecutors, ye false swearers, all hell boil over, ye burning mountains, roll down your lava, for I will come out on top at the last, 
I have more to boast of than any ever, ever than ever any man had. I'm the only man mm. that has ever been able to keep a whole church together since the days of Adam. A large majority of the whole have stood by me. Neither Paul, John, Peter, nor Jesus ever did it. I boast that no man ever did such a work as I. The followers of Jesus ran away from him, but the Latter-day Saints never ran away from me yet. You know my daily work and conver walk and conversation. I'm in the bosom of a virtuous and good people. How I do love to hear the wolves howl. When they can get rid of me, the devil will also go. <laughs> Did you ever hear of that before you left Never. the church? Never heard That's it. That's in the history of the church, absolutely. volume six. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Yeah, it is. But I mean, there's plenty of uh, uh, examples of his egotistic yeah. Ways yeah. and uh, you know, general of the army, and, general of the army. Yeah. You know, this and, was a big one for Carla. Yeah, when Carla heard this one, it, it was one of those things, like you say, just kind of nail in the coffin or something. Yeah. It just really pushed her over. Did you ever edge. know about the Council of Fifty? I never knew that. I didn't know about the Council of Fifty. I knew about the boast yeah. before I left the church, but the Council of Fifty, where they ordained him king, you yeah, know? yeah, great, huh? kind of crazy. Next one's word of wisdom, word of wisdom, yeah. You know, Joseph Smith actually drank in I Carthage, that, yeah. you know, he actually drank wine. I mean, there's instances in, in the history of the church where he's drinking uh, Brigham Young on the distillery. Right. Okay. So it's kind of these contradictions. And, uh, you know, the one that was, the prophet that was really big on that was Heber J. Grant. I mean, he's the one that really pushed it to be like to a... To become a word of wisdom. Yeah, to be a, like a commandment, to keep to, you out, to of, keep uh, out the of the temple, the temple yeah. you know. But here's, the, here's a question, Earl. Have you ever thought about this, you know, because in the Doctrine and Covenants, it talks about, and again, hot drinks are not for the body or belly. Yeah. Now, modern day Mormons, you know, well, coffee, coffee tea. Coffee and tea. Well, what about iced coffee? <laughs> You know, I know. What about iced coffee? Is that, I mean, is what it, about it, is what it, about soup? <laughs> hot <laughs> chocolate, hot drinks. You know, hot yeah. Drink. What what is it that? Uh, <laughs> and to think that they something like that, like that. And Jesus said, "It's not what goes in the belly that defileth man, but you what know what comes, comes out." You know, it's just these are just some things to think about. You know, and I know that some Mormons will take offense or feel like we're picking on, but it, you know. But these are things that you have a perspective of now that it really isn't that important. And to no. and the way they come about is not very important. Yeah. And either. to think that somehow they would have some kind of eternal consequence, consequence on your life because you, keep you, you drank out. a cup of coffee or a glass of tea, it's gonna keep you from yeah. going into a temple to do, you know, saving ordinances. Yeah. And so like you say, Joseph crazy. Smith drank. Yeah, he drank, absolutely. And I don't know, I mean, yes, the word of wisdom progressed and evolved, but it was still there when he was there. Okay, the next one we have is the temple. You know, I, I, there's so much that could be said about this, but when Solomon built his temple and the temple of Herod, it was used specifically for the shedding of blood, animal sacrifice. And it, there were no marriages in the temple, and even further, only Levites, the tribe of Aaron, or Levi, were allowed to go into the temple. Right. Jesus couldn't go into the temple. Peter, Paul, women were not allowed in the temple. Yeah. So there's just no question that the temple that we have, or the Mormons have now, here in Salt Lake and throughout the world, are doing things that were never biblical. No. Never, never Solomon's temple. It's that further light knowledge thing. Yeah. They have it, to rely on Joseph Smith. Yeah, and no baptisms for the dead. Um, yeah. it, it's just, and you know, the fig leaves, they were given to Adam and Eve by Satan. <laughs> yeah. God, in symbolism, gave them coats of skin, which could only be acquired by the shedding of blood. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so next one. Meaningful scriptures. I guess we've both come up with a few scriptures. You want to go through yours first? I would love to. And I'm going to go you to... Pick three or four that kind of had impact on the us. The one to me that just really touches me so deeply. And it's in Matthew 11, okay. 28. You know this, 28 through 20 or 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Praise God. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That scripture take, took on a whole new meaning for me when I became. And wasn't there a sense of freedom? Oh my goodness, when, when you Earl, it's unbelievable. Came to understand that yeah. we were relying on His righteousness and not what we do. Yeah. He said, yeah. "Come unto me, I'll give you rest. Yeah, and I'll wear you out on one side and turn you over on the other. You know, <laughs> keep, like we heard somebody once say. Yeah, but it's it, there's 
freedom, there's liberty, not freedom and liberty to sin. There's yeah. freedom and liberty in Christ. He's done it for you. Yeah. He'll continue to do it for you. He'll work you in you. So it's, to be on that little treadmill. It, it, it's a beautiful thing. And of course, you know, Ephesians, what is it? 2.10, where it talks about, you know, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be uh, justified. Um, let's see. Or by grace you're saved. Yeah, that's Ephesians 2. Uh, I've got that one too. Yeah. Ephesians I mean, 2, 8, 9. And another know. big one, and I'll just let this be the last one, is Isaiah 43.10. We know oh, this. No you are my witnesses, you know, yeah. where he talks about, you know, before me no God was formed, after me shall no God be formed. That was a kill. I mean, I don't know how you explain that away. Now they'll say, you know, well, he's talking about gods like idols and things, but that's that's not the case. Not what he, and he repeats it many times. Yes, in he Isaiah. does. Yes, he does. Yeah. So that was a big one for me. All oh, that good. Is. Well, I had a couple. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. I'll just go ahead and read it. Okay. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And I always think of this, I'm giving you a gift, and I want you to pay for it. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't make any sense. And that's yeah. repeated so many times. Another big one for me, and I, I guess it's, What's interesting, we'll cover it another time, but Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto yes. us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Another one that really struck me was Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I have good friends who are, uh, well, when I was Mormon, I had good friends that were Christian. Yeah. And some of my Mormon friends would even say, well, they're going to be in heaven with us. Yeah. And I would say, well, that's not Mormon doctrine. They've yeah. got to get into the temple. They've got to get baptized. They've got to go to the temple. They can't see God just because they have a pure heart. Yeah. And their Matthew or Jesus is telling us that all The interesting you need thing is about that, heart. though, Earl, is when you say, you know, you'll say something to a Mormon, and they'll, a Mormon doctrine yeah. in particular, and they'll say, well, I don't believe that. Well, it's in the doc. It's in yeah. the, it's in your doc. It's in the church. Yeah, but I, you know, yeah. no, there'll be good people get to heaven. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, know, it's funny how your kingdom. mind can do that. And then my last one was Romans one twenty one twenty three, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Wow. And that's what Joseph Smith's done. Yeah. He's taken this awesome God and he's made him a, a former human. Yeah. A sinful human on right. some, from some other planet. That earned his place. Earned his way yeah. in a progression. Anyway, great, great. Uh, all right. Book of Abraham. Oh, boy. Book of Abraham. <clears throat> I, you know, I could go in, but, you know, for a lack of time, there's just so much you can say about that. I mean, it's just, uh, oh, my goodness. Egyptian grammar book joseph smith's writing he writes it down as a as a, a grammar book yeah, yeah. so this is what these things mean exactly yeah. and we have modern egyptologists uh and thank god for gerald and sandra tanner yeah. they got to bring us yeah they got it on you know the microfilm before yeah. they've been locked away and i don't know wherever the granite vaults or yeah. wherever they got all that stuff now that uh they were able to to uh, bring that out to the light, yeah. and 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 let people know that you know he did not. There was not a translation. They 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 found what the Papra in 1967, uh, the original the, the, with, the original back in New yeah. York. Yeah, none of it lines up. I mean, I know I've heard all the excuses, John yeah. G, and you you've read them yeah. too. Yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense. Well, the funny thing was for me, I can I could actually forgive or excuse the folding problem. You know, well, we didn't have the long length, or we lose lost some of it. Yeah. But you've got the facsimile That's sitting right. there in the Pearl of Great Price, and Joseph Smith has told us what that means. Yes. And or what they mean, and they don't. And it's hogwash. So it's, I mean, <laughs> basically that even even if the rolls yeah. aren't the same, or we've lost a little here and lost a little there, still you've you've lost those facts those facsimiles yeah. wrong, and the English and the grammar that you mentioned. All righty, Jesus is Jehovah. This was kind of an interesting one for me, and I call it a fatal flaw in Mormon doctrine, because you, here you have Jesus, who is the Jehovah in according to Mormonism, the Jehovah of the Old Testament. He's God, okay? But he hasn't been on the earth. He hasn't mm. gotten a body. He hasn't been baptized. He hasn't gone through a temple. He hasn't been married for time and all eternity. Mm. And he has no wives. So how did he get to become a God 
uh, without going through this process that Mormons uh, adhere to and what they're trying to do now, yes. going through all these things. Anyway, I just think that's a... You know, it's the Holy Spirit. struck me yeah. kind of funny that he hadn't done those things and yet he, he was a God and a spirit yeah. at that point. All right. Okay, next is uh, First Vision Accounts. First oh, Vision Accounts. Heavy duties there. I'm telling you. And yeah. you know, uh, I think there's what, nine? And, but yeah. there's something so like different that. I mean, versions. different variations of yeah. where he, you know, answered a newsletter or something, and you know, or interviewed. Uh, one of the ones that was first written in his own handwriting, yeah. you know, in 1832, right. it, it says the Lord. It doesn't even talk about two person. Now, I'm going to tell you, friends, it, if God the Father, and you know, you've grown up in a Trinitarian or, you know, where, you know, and there's actually a God and a physical being, or if he actually and another one standing, there standing next, next to you, you're not going to forget that detail. No. I mean, in every description and, yeah. and you know, yeah. uh, recital of it. That, right. That's, to me, is an amazing thing. And real quickly, I just want to share the three, you know, some of the things that don't cons are not consistent in his... Um, uh, the different versions. The different versions. The date... You know, because one one says he was he says he was 16, one says he's he was 15, the other one says 14. You can kind of excuse yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, somewhat. And and uh, and then the other one is you know the motivation. You know, first he was seeking for divine help. Uh, from no motive, a spirit appears with news of plates. I mean, there's different variations. Those you can kind of excuse away, but the one where it's a spirit, an angel, two angels, Jesus, many angels, the Father and Son. I don't know. Earl, that you know, I don't know how like you the can... whole process was evolving. As exactly. Went through, I mean, I, I think that is pretty. Did you know about so, the 1832? Before absolutely you came not. Out? I only knew about the 1838. Was it 1838? The uh, one in yeah, that we have in the Pearl the of Pearl Great, Great Price. Price. I think 43 yeah. or 80, 38. Yeah, 38. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that the amazing. only one I ever heard of. Yeah. Again, we know more now than absolutely. we did before. Absolutely. No doubt. All right. Next one that I have is Mormon doctrines that aren't in the Book of Mormon. Now, I never even gave this a thought when I was a Mormon. Did you? Not really. Did you ever think no. that this stuff's not in there? Because the, it says it's the most perfect book or most correct book, yeah. and it contains the fullness of the gospel, I'm assuming. I think the mentality of the thinking's already been done. I think that really applies. I mean, we don't... You just don't even question yeah, or think about question. it. These are some of the things that aren't in the Book of Mormon. Plurality of gods, baptism for the dead, celestial marriage, polygamy needed to become a god, blacks cursed with a dark skin, that you can become a god, pre-existence, that God has a body of flesh and bones, that we have a heavenly mother, that there's three degrees of glory, that God progressed to Godhood, that God has a father, uh, temple endowments, ordinances, the Aaronic priesthood's not there, eternal families aren't there. And, but what is in there in Alma chapter 11, verses 26 through 29, it says, uh, and now when Alma had spoken these words, Zezer, I'm sorry, and Zeezrom said unto him, Thou sayest there is a true and living God. Now Amulek said, Yes, yea, there is a true and living God. Now Zeezrom said, Is there more than one God? And he answered, No. <laughs> oh, whoops. Yeah, he, so he, somebody he, he changed didn't consult something. with Joseph. He didn't check with Joseph. <laughs> All right. Uh, priesthood, the Aaronic and Melchizedek priesthood and high priests and so on. This yeah. is an interesting topic, isn't it? Real quick, back on the other one. Yeah. Uh, you know, basically Mormonism is the Book of Mormon, or, or, or well, three quarters I know of it, it, you know, 80%. So yeah. anyway, the priesthood. And as we mentioned earlier, it's very Trinitarian in the sense that there's only one God, and the changes that are in the 1830 Book of Mormon, we'll talk about those. But uh, anyway, it's, yeah. It's the priesthood, efficient. lesser and higher, Aaronic priesthood, yeah. Melchizedek priesthood. You know, we you learned that, you know, one of the things I didn't know was that Joseph and Oliver's account wasn't even published in the 1833 uh, Doctrine, Doctrine, Doctrine of Commandments, the I think it Book was. Book of Commandments. Book of yeah. Commandments. It wasn't even, I mean, something that significant. Well, it wasn't I mean? mentioned, as far as we know, in, yeah. the, April, in the organizing meeting in 1830, April yeah. 6, 1830. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it was totally, it's, like you said a while ago, there seems to be an evolution, and there was. It yeah. just, and it continues 
to evolve into. Now they talk about it being further light in knowledge, but <laughs> or line upon line, or line upon line. Yeah. Yes, but I mean, there's there's so many inconsistencies. There's so many things that don't doesn't line up with the with the Bible. You know, just for the sheer fact that you know, um, what is it that no man has a legal right? I mean, that's even in DNC. No man has a legal right to hold the keys of of this priesthood. Talking about the Aaronic priesthood, except yeah. those who are a little descendant. Of Aaron, yeah. well, of Levi, yeah, the yeah. tribe of Levi, of Levi, the yeah. tribe of Levi, you know, yeah. or descendant of Aaron. I mean, yeah, John the Baptist would never give his Levitical priesthood yeah. to to Joseph Smith and and Oliver Cowley. Yeah, and then and then Jesus is our high priest. I mean, Mormons, read. my Mormon brothers and sisters, <laughs> friends, read Hebrews seven. You know, read Hebrews. That's all yeah. I'll say about that. Yeah, read Hebrews. Then you find out who our high yeah. priest really An is. Unchangeable. And who? And, in Greek, that's what untransferable. Yeah, it's it. You know. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Oh, that's excellent. I hope people will invest in that so. a little bit because that's uh... all right. Speaking of the Book of Commandments, and I think this is this is just fascinating. The Book of Commandments. I actually got an 1835 copy of the of the Book of Commandments, and this is what it says in section seven three. Oh, remember these words and keep my commandments. Remember, this is your gift. This is, this is Joseph Smith talking to Oliver Cowdery. Now this is not all. You have another gift, which is the gift of working with the rod. Behold, it has told you things. Behold, there is no other power save God that can cause this rod of nature to work in your hands. The expect the the thinking is is that this was a divining rod. Uh, you know, Joseph Smith was into the occult kind of stuff oh, yeah. and buried treasure and all mm -hmm. that. He was telling Oliver Cowdery that he had this gift to work with the rod. And yet, in th about two years later, it was replaced with this in section 8, 6, and 7. And it's it identical, the first few verses. Now, this is not all I give, for you have another gift, which is the gift of Aaron. Changes it from the gift of the rod of nature. It has told you many things. Behold, there is no other power save the power of God that can cause this gift of Aaron to be with you. Yeah. So, is, is that's funny. Interpolation. Take, putting in, taking out. Yeah. And so... One other thing that real quickly, I had a, well, we're actually out of time. Yeah. Can you believe that? I, anyway, amazing. this one real quick. Section 28, which is now 27, used to be about five, six verses. Now there's 18 in there. Wow. And it's all the ones where Moroni jo uh, came and visited, Peter, James, and John visited. Yeah. So the Book of Commandments is, has evolved. And, and then Section 101 in the Book of uh, Commandments talks about... Uh, Oh my goodness, we're out of time. Talks about, well, I'm going to cover that when we get back because it is Sounds kind of good. interesting and important. Anyway, thanks, Warren. This is, I hope this is turning out. We'll, ah. we'll find out. Gratefully, we're taped, so people can Praise God. find out. Hopefully, it'll do some good, huh? Yeah, I hope so, and, and you're a delight. Thanks for being willing Glad to share to be your here. time. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time here on the Ex Mormon Files. Thanks. <laughs>